Hello and welcome to our lecture about JavaScript. JavaScript is another programming language and it's if the Python is the only language you know it's uh, quite a bit different than Python. Um, so JavaScript was originally designed as an addition to HTML and CSS and it really started as a programming language inside of the browser that runs right in the browser. Um, even though it's named like JavaScript, uh, like Java, it's really more like uh, Python in how it works and it except that it has a C like syntax and it's really an amazing language and uh, a lot of people for a lot of people it's their number one language their favorite language and so it's worth learning JavaScript even if you love Python. So uh, JavaScript is uh, an interesting language in that it was built very quickly um, in 10 days in 1995 by a fellow named Brendan Eich. Brennan was a PhD in physics and he knew a lot about programming languages and formal languages and how to build compilers really fast. And so the idea was to make a sort of a subversion of Java, like a lightweight version of Java and put it in the browser. Um, today it's gone through a standardization process and it's called ECMAScript. And so if we were to take a look at the history of programming languages, um, you, you know probably, oops, you know by now, you know Python, right? Um, and Python is a great language and JavaScript is the other language we're going to learn here. And this just sort of puts them in some context so that you understand a bit of the, the influences. So in the very beginnings in the 50s, 1950s, we programmed in assembly language. And then most computers, all they could do is numeric calculations very well. And so languages like Fortran came along. Um, probably the, there's lots of languages, and so if you go back to the 50s and the 60s, people were inventing languages all the time. Um, but a language that really, for me, changed everything was the C language, invented in 1972. And I still want to do a really cool class on C. C is not a good language to write everything in. It's, a, it's very much like assembly language. It, it, it mirrors how computers really work, which is kind of different than how we program computers in a lot of ways. But the other thing that C was doing was it was acknowledging that computers were less and less about numerical computations and more and more about strings and, and, and you know, words and messages and things like that. So if you, if you, you know, it's probably 95% of the calculations in computers have to do with moving data around, not numbers around. And C was great at that. So all the languages I used up till I started using C, they were kind of a numeric system that was sort of fighting to do characters well, and C was a very well done character system. And so it became the language, C is the language that's a kind of the mother language of all this. It's the Linux is written in C. Python is written in C, PHP is written in C, JavaScript is probably written in C. Um, and so it's like the lowest level language that we go to these days. And when you're writing a language and you want it to be fast, the implementation of that language is often written in C. C++ came from C as an object-oriented variation. And we talked a lot about object-oriented Python. We're going to talk about object-oriented JavaScript coming up. And so... C++ influenced a whole lot of systems that had to do, in a sense, um, object, uh, C++ influenced Python as well. And so C++ has added an object-oriented layer. It's actually probably the least object-oriented of all, any of these other languages on here, um, but it had object-oriented concepts. C Sharp was Microsoft's version of that. Java was an uh, open source um, the thing that became the, the sort of progenitor of JavaScript, but again, they're not as related as you might think. It's really JavaScript came from uh, C more than it came from Java. Um, there's a few things that are Im imitating Java. And, and so all of the things above this line are semicolon and curly brace. They use semicolon and curly brace to end lines and to begin and end blocks. Curly brace, beginning curly brace, and end curly brace. And then there's this other set of programming languages that don't use semicolon and curly brace. And C was the first language that did the semicolon and curly brace. And so these languages that are kind of below this line, Bash, Perl, Python, and PHP, 
are really, actually PHP is a semicolon and curly brace as well. Python is the language we've been learning and it's, it's really the odd language. So we're going to learn a language that's in the category that makes it easier for you to learn C or C++ or Java or Objective-C. So this is worth learning, even though you know Python. There was another movement that was sort of C is a very high performance language and really aimed at computer scientists to build complex systems like, like Linux. But then there were languages for like the end user that just got work done, but weren't seen as like super performant for professionals, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so Bash, which is the Linux shell where you're typing CD and LS, if you're familiar with that, Perl was a report generation language that introduce the concept of associative arrays. And um, most people joke about Perl. Um, I don't like Perl because I can never read my code after I write it. I can write it, but I can't read it afterwards. Um, but it introduced a lot of wonderful concepts like associative arrays, um, which we would call dictionaries in Python. And, and Perl, you could, it really definitely influenced Python because of its ease of programming. So what Perl was really good at was allowing a person with very little formal training on data structures to be able to use associative arrays and nested associative arrays to create pretty sophisticated data structures. And Python uh, fell, came along with that and PHP also, original PHP stood for Perl Hypertext Processor. Um, now it doesn't stand for that, but Perl and Python and PHP are in this category of sort of interpreted, easy to use languages with strings that work really nice and they just make life a lot easier. In, these, in languages like C, strings are very difficult. So, if we take a look at this, right, we, we've learned Python and we're going to learn JavaScript next. And so we're moving in, to, but again, JavaScript you can think of as unlocking a whole bunch of other languages. And so it's worth learning it a little bit, even though in this class, we're not going to go into any great detail because mostly you're gonna be cutting and pasting JavaScript and then tweaking it and reading it and debugging it. So we're really not focusing on writing too much new JavaScript. So there's a couple of situations where you'll find yourself writing some JavaScript. One is augmenting HTML. That'll be the first thing we'll do. There is this thing in the browser that runs JavaScript and the way it interacts with the browser's UI is through the document object model. You can add a, a library like jQuery to make that interaction easier because the document object models aren't as portable across browsers as we would like sometimes. Um, and then if you keep going, you find that you're building more and more of your application logic in the browser. And so they say, you know what, I just want to write the, the model and view part, maybe, I mean, the, the, the controller and view part in the browser in JavaScript using te a templating language. And you can use like Vue or React to do that. And then if you keep on going, you can act JavaScript as just a language and they've implemented it inside the server using as a, as a server-based language. And we would use Django and Python as our server-based language, but you can actually write your entire application front to back in JavaScript and use something like Node to run the server side of it that's actually talking to the database. So there's lots and lots. JavaScript is just like you're, you're opening the door into a lot of really wonderful capabilities. So like I said, it is in the syntax family of Java, and that is that it has semicolons to end lines, white space doesn't matter, open curly brace and close curly brace, start and end blocks. Whereas in, in uh, Python, you just end a line and you in, indent to indicate a block of text and you de-indent to indicate the end of that block of text. Now, I will admit that Python is not my favorite syntax. It is my favorite language in that I like its libraries, I like how it thinks about things, I like its object-oriented patterns. I like a lot about it, but I do like my curly braces because for me I like to see the beginning and end of blocks, whereas in Python you only see the beginning, but that's okay. I'm just saying that now you're going to see some of this syntax and it's going to look if Python's the only language you know, it's gonna look quite different. If you know Java, it'd be like, yeah, of course I know that. I've been programming that for a long time. So up next, we're gonna talk about how we work with JavaScript when we're sitting in a browser.